the four right-wingers on the program Outnumbered decided to make the fifth correspondent, liberal commentator Jessica Tarlov, who's been recently making the rounds on all of the Fox shows, just kicking butt and taking names. And this appearance was no exception, in which she brutally fact-checked the MAGA cultists on a variety of issues, and it was glorious. All right, friends, we have several clips to play in this video. And listen, we had a couple of weeks where Jessica Tarlov was MIA. She's currently pregnant, which means she'll probably be on maternity leave in the near future. So we got to get our Jessica Tarlov fix in as much as possible. And for whatever reason, the people who like schedule and and make the selections for who shows up on these shows decided that, I don't know, they just wanted to put MAGA through the meat grinder. So we want to play several clips in which, again, Jessica Tarlov fact checks these MAGA cultists, including Kaylee McEnany, in just absolute exquisite fashion. If I'm Biden and I'm looking at this, Jessica, I, I'm very pleased with my fundraising. I'm pleased yeah. with my mail-in vote operation in the midterms. I'm pleased with my TikTok social media operation. <laughs> but I'm not pleased with the enthusiasm of the Trump base. They are going to show up, and that is what would make me nervous. Yeah, but they showed up in 2020, and, and Trump lost. It takes more than your base. I'm so this is so good. So as we've talked about, or as I, I wrote for Luke Beasley's website, and I think I'm probably going to do a video about this, President Biden's been kicking the Trump campaign's butts in terms of regular fundraising. We see it quarter after quarter after quarter. President Biden and the Democrats wildly outperform Donald Trump and the Republicans. It's actually embarrassing. So Kaylee McEnany has pointed this out, but she's like, well, listen, the base is going to show up. Shouldn't Biden be nervous? Tarlov points out, actually, no, they showed up in 2020. More people voted for Donald Trump in 2020 than did in 2016. And it still wasn't enough to defeat President, now President Biden. And this is the problem. To me, it's such a, it's, it's such a fascinating snapshot into how MAGA cultists think, because I think some of them genuinely believe, even though the facts clearly indicate otherwise, that they are more popular than what they are, that they are the majority. They're not. They've never been. They don't even have a full command of the Republican Party in terms of numbers. They're certainly the driving force behind it. But these people tend to conflate primaries and general elections. See, Donald Trump has such a stranglehold on the primary. Ergo, he's going to win the general. Well, actually, that's not necessarily true. And it may not be true. It certainly wasn't true in 2020. Why should we necessarily assume that's the case here? Uh, so on that note, Tarlov and Kaylee McEnany in particular continue to spar basically on that topic. Donald Trump gave us a preview of the final push. He was speaking last night, talked about getting rid of Roe, how everyone's happy about that. We know from all of the turnout in the special elections that that is not true. Forcing school prayer, something hugely unpopular. He can talk about migrants streaming yeah, down Stake Mountain. You Hold on. No, you're talking the, about you want to win the election, right? You right. don't want to just win the primary. January Sixers are hostages. No, the hostages are in Jessica, Gaza. And the Department of Education Jessica, being whittled down to one person all due respect, to ensure we all speak English. In all due respect, you know, the, the talk that you bring up has not worked. I mean, you look at every national poll, minus Quinnipiac, President Trump is prevailing in them. Then why is, is he, why is President Biden down just 1.9 points in the real clear politics average? The cherry picking but polls down. when it is so... We he needs a reason. Barack Obama was down five to Mitt Romney. Why is was President Romney? I don't remember his administration at all. He needs a reset. He knows it. The State of the Union is supposed to be the reset. We will see that is the reset that he needs. I can't wait to visit. I would advise changing the rhetoric. So what's funny is, so it's interesting because I actually recently had a debate on this topic, or rather this topic came up during a debate I crashed recently in which the conservative with whom I was sparring was appealing to polls. And if you watch this channel, you're a member of my audience, you know, and I get a lot of flack from this from my audience, I don't discount polls. I don't. I know a lot of people in my audience say, ditch the polls, don't talk about the polls. No, polling is important. It's always been important. It probably always will be. I just also contextualize it. It's a snapshot in time. There is a margin of error, and the election hasn't happened yet. But what's hilarious is Jessica points out results, election after election after election. Donald Trump lost in 2018 uh, when Republicans got shellacked in the midterms. Uh, he lost in 2020. He lost in 2021 when the Senate flipped to, to the Democrats. They lost in 2022. They lost in 2023. Donald Trump has presided over one L after another. The L to W ratio, the win to loss ratio, is heavily lopsided under Trump in favor of loss. But Kaylee McEnany is like, well, no offense, Jessica, the actual victories and defeats, those don't count. The polling before this upcoming election, that's what counts. Why hasn't it worked? Well, as Jessica Tarlov points out, polling had President Obama, incumbent President Obama, 
down under Mitt Romney ahead of the 2020, or excuse me, 2012 uh, election. And as she points out, what happened to President Romney's administration? I don't remember that. It's because he lost, right? So I want to be clear. It's entirely possible that Donald Trump will win the 2024 election. I've said that before. It makes me very nervous. I take it very seriously. But know how they try to gerrymander. Well, Trump's winning in the polls, ignoring all the concrete defeats that this man has suffered over the years. Jessica Tarlov has the infinitely better argument. I wish she would have in that final exchange just said, listen, you can take preliminary polling ahead of an election if that's what you would count as a victory. You are welcome to it. But it's never counted as a victory before. Again, Obama and Romney. And by the way, when it comes to actual elections, the things that ultimately matter most, Biden wins more than Trump. It's simply a fact. And so I wish she would have rubbed it in more. But I like the fact that she still made the argument the same. 